Ladies and gentlemen, heroes of so many wars, this is the ninth annual conference of the American Veterans Center, and I'm proud and honored to have been asked to, invite, to, have been asked to participate in this event for the fifth year running. Today, we are remembering the greatest generation and the latest generation, those brave men and women who risked their lives and continue to risk their lives to preserve our freedom. I'm proud to be here in the name of my grandfather and honored to be sharing the podium with so many of you who were, who were in the World War II battlefields before I was even born and with veterans of more recent wars, which only too soon I will be able to relate to personally. My 20-year-old son, Alexander, graduates from the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst in December and tells me with pride that six months later he'll be fighting in Iraq. So I can certainly identify with your husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, and sweethearts. So with great, I'm very proud of him, but also have great anxiety of where he's going. I'm often asked when it was that I first realized that my grandfather was a bit different from other people. The answer to that was gradually, because I thought he was just grandpapa, and I think probably his grandchildren were the only people after World War II who took him completely for granted. But one day, when I was about six years old, my mother gave me a parcel, and she said, oh, Grandpapa's sent you this. So I ripped open this big parcel covered with brown paper, and inside there was a life-size toy bulldog. It was a magnificent creature with wheels in its paws and a head which moved from side to side when I pulled it along. I was enchanted, but couldn't quite understand why he'd sent me a present. And so when I asked my mother why, why, as it wasn't my birthday, I'd been so lucky, she said, well, someone sent it to him and he thought you might like it. This puzzled me even more because I couldn't understand why a grown man would be receiving a toy dog. But she explained that during World War II, he'd been known as the Great British Bulldog. This didn't really quite answer my question, but the next morning I trotted off to school and did a survey of all my friends. I said, my grandfather's a bulldog. What sort of dog is yours? <laughs> <clears throat> During the four decades since his death, Winston Churchill became an historical figure whom fewer and fewer people could actually remember. Then, following the tragic events of September the 11th, he quite literally stepped out of the pages of the history books and back onto the international stage. Leaders everywhere called on the Winston Churchill's words for inspiration. The speeches of President Bush and Prime Minister Blair began to ring out in Churchillian tones. It soon became clear that Winston Churchill's inspiring example of leadership are as relevant today as they were in 1940. Why is it that leadership is so sought after now? It is always important, but there seems to be something about the present age which makes it more important than ever before. The answer, I believe, is change. The world is always changing, but every so often it goes through a period of very rapid change change that can be disorienting, change that can seem threatening. Where are things going? What kind of a world will we be living in in 25 years from now, or even in five? Leadership is about change. The very best leaders are those who can not only deal with change, but anticipate it. Leaders who can make sense of what is happening and look ahead explain the situation to others, and offer a vision of how to move forward. The 1930s and 40s were such a time. Churchill was not only able to lead his country in its darkest hour, he was also the most articulate interpreter of what was happening and what was likely to happen. He saw before most what Hitler represented 
and what he would do. A few years later, he saw more clearly than most what the post-war period would be like. His famous Iron Curtain speech, much criticized at the time, showed him at his perceptive best, a leader who was every bit as good at analyzing developments as he was at leading people through them. These skills come to the fore in times like the present, when everything seems to be changing, from safety in our cities, to the climate, to the internet-driven revolutions in the way we do business. These are times when we need the best leadership we can get to deal with the threats and to seize the opportunities. <laughs>